Hi, my name's Dr. Nick Pilcher. Um, I'm the program leader for the MSc in Intercultural Business Communication here at Edinburgh Napier. And what we wanted to do with this live stream was really to say more about what intercultural business com communication is and what it consists of, what things there are to be studied on it, um, both at a postgraduate and an undergraduate level. Um, and I think maybe a good way of just starting that is to, just to get everybody to introduce themselves. I've got um, Frank and Irene, they're here as alumni of the postgraduate MSc, and they'll say a little bit later. But in terms of the teaching team, there's uh, myself, Sibylla, Mabel, Vivian and Jane. And I'd just ask them just to briefly introduce themselves first. I think that would be a good idea. So if I start with Sibylla, is that all right? Hi there, my name is Sibylla. Um, thanks for listening. Um, I originally have a languages background, but I've been teaching on the intercultural modules for the past few years. I have recently completed my PhD in the areas of multilingualism, intercultural adaptation and pedagogy. And um, apart from teaching here as a lecturer, I'm also a member of the international team. So if you're watching this and you're actually already um, studying on a postgraduate related program abroad, and you might be interested in joining us just for a single trimester or perhaps even as part of a dual degree agreement, then do get in touch and, and we can explore options around that as well. Thanks, Sibylla. Um, Mabel? You need to unmute yourself, Mabel. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mabel Victoria, and I consider myself a border crosser. I was born in the Philippines, but I spent most of my adult working life in Canada, uh, Switzerland, and now in the UK. Uh, I teach intercultural business communication, and uh, my interest in these fields is primarily motivated by the intersection between language, culture, and communication. And thus, I research uh, discourse analyses or how people from various different backgrounds communicate with each other uh, verbally. Brilliant, thanks. Um, Jane? Hi everyone, um, my name is Jane Wilkinson and I am also a member of the Intercultural Communication team here at uh, Edinburgh Napier. Um, I also have a languages background but have been working in the field of intercultural communication also for many years now and I have a particular interest both in terms of research and teaching um, in migration and mobility and kind of the role of intercultural communication when people are on the move or when people are, you know, welcoming other people and receiving other people kind of in in their home contexts um, and I'm involved at both um, undergraduate and postgraduate level in teaching intercultural communication um, and I'm going to be talking to you a bit today about some exciting new undergraduate programs that we have to offer. Brilliant, thanks Jane. And Vivian? Yep. Hi everyone, my name is Vivian Jo. I'm a lecturer in intercultural business communication I'm also the deputy program leader for the master's program in the same subject. I have a very broad interest in really researching anything related to what happens when different ways of knowing come into contact, whether that's about human relations, interpersonal intergroup, or identity or communication. Thanks, Vivian. And I realize I've not really said much about what I do, which is sort of teach on the program, but I'm also interested in studying a researching a, a range of areas really, kind of around intercultural business communication or education or qualitative and quantitative research methods, lo lots of things really. So what we wanted to do just now was we've got a few questions which was kind of frame the things that we'll talk about. And if we sort of kick off with the first question, which is why study intercultural business communication and what is intercultural business communication? And I'd like to just ask um, Mabel to say a few things on this one, if that's all right. Just right. Off. Thanks a lot, Nick. I made sure I'm unmuted. Anyway, uh, this morning, I tried to make a list of great reasons to study intercultural business communication. 
and I came up easily with a dozen, but it will take us whole afternoon. So I just tried to group this important reasons that I thought might be relevant to you. So the first reason is for professional and career development. And the second one is personal growth and development. Um, so to address the first one, professional and career, uh, let's face it, globalization is inevitable. So in today's interconnected world, businesses and economies are no longer confined by borders. So understanding how to effectively communicate and collaborate across cultures is essential for success in the international marketplace. Employers highly value graduates who possess intercultural communication skills. So um, obviously this competitive edge can open doors to a wide array of career opportunities, both domestically and internationally. Yeah, to illustrate, um, some of my students who have worked in multinational companies are and are engaged in human resource or international negotiations in business often ask me, well, how do you negotiate? How do you communicate with the Japanese? And I always say, it really depends. Which Japanese are you talking about? What is the age? What is the gender? What is the educational level? Did this Japanese study in the UK and are doing business in Japan? Or is this someone who stayed in Japan most of their lives? And which part of Japan did they come from? What is the language of negotiation? Is it through English, Japanese, or through an interpreter? Important aspect also is the context. Is this communication by email, on the phone, or in person? Where is the meeting taking place? Is it over dinner, in a restaurant, or in an office? And what is the end goal of the meeting? Um, I conducted research with multinational companies in a business context. There were 35 participants from different, about 17 national and linguistic backgrounds. While there were some uh, challenges in the communication uh, that I observed, what turned out to be the deciding factor uh, was actually the organizational culture and the goal of the interaction. So what I'm trying to say, culture, which is often equated with nationality, is not always relevant in the communication. So uh, to answer again that first question, in studying intercultural communication positions you to assume leadership roles that demand a deep understanding of cultural dynamics, communication strategies, and human relations. Um, now I said that I was going to address you know, personal reasons why uh, it's good to study interpersonal communication. I start with my own research. Uh, what got me into uh, intercultural communication was uh, this certain kind of noticing that uh, people who don't have English as their native language tend to be blamed when there are uh, instances of miscommunication. So it got me to researching. And then I notice people, whether they speak English or another language, they have amazing strat strategies that they use for communication, which gave me a lot of confidence and I became more self-aware. So studying intercultural business communication is definitely not just about business uh, because it fosters a deep appreciation for the richness and diversity of cultures. So in other words, it encourages you to step outside of your comfort zone. This is how I think, how might the other person be feeling about the situation? So you expose the different world views and thus broaden your horizons. So being more culturally aware and sensitive to your own and other people's cultures, you improve your own interpersonal skills definitely not just in business, with your friends, with your family, and um, within the society. Now I'm gonna tackle the more difficult question that Nick asked, and I'm glad I'm doing this uh, second. What is intercultural business communication? And I have to say, I'm going to give you a very indirect answer just because of that time and space limitation. And here's why, anything with the word culture is 
notoriously difficult to pin down. And it depends a lot on how you're using the term. But within the narrow context of business and communication, uh, we can provisionally say that intercultural business communication refers to the exchange of information, ideas, and messages between individuals or groups from different cultural backgrounds within a professional context. So it can involve navigating and effectively managing cultural differences and nuances to ensure successful communication and collaboration. Well, when I say this, uh, some people say, well, I don't really see culture or I don't see cultural differences. I just see human beings. Well, it's, it may be partially true, but my answer is this. It is easy to underestimate cultural differences. For example, one of my colleagues, Sibylle, and I were working on this project with international students. So we asked them to fill out. There were students from uh, many different countries in this particular group. Uh, we were going to um, uh, host an event that involved serving food and refreshments. So we got them to fill in a form. And one of the questions was, what are your dietary requirements? So most of us would know how to answer that. And it would mean, well, vegetarian, gluten-free, or something like that. But to my surprise, a group of students answered this question, dietary requirements, saying, I prefer steak or chicken biryani. So it, just from that really uh, a micro interaction with this particular intercultural difference, and I was faced with my own ethnocentric, ethnocentricity. It's a good reminder that the same words can yield different interpretations. So um, in communication, it's important to be, to be very clear and clarity involves perhaps uh, considering how other people might feel or interpret the same words. And just to go back to my own example of how to communicate with a Japanese or Mexican or Australian, uh, my, my view is that we need to look at it from an intersectional perspective. Um, like what I said about age and gender, educational background. An example might be, I think I might have a harder time communicating with my sister She's extroverted uh, from the same linguistic background, uh, the same religious, working class, and we both grew up in a rural um, town in the Philippines. I will have an easier time communicating with a male introverted Buddhist PhD student from Bangkok. So it's important not to underestimate or overestimate cultural differences. But uh, the, the part that I wish to point out is that we're all members of different cultural identities or different small cultures. Every single interaction is intercultural, could be age differences, educational background differences, and also we cannot not communicate and thus intercultural business communication. It's important and my definitions um, in this uh, particular instance. So I'm sure uh, my colleagues might have something to add because as I warned you in the beginning, I intentionally um, made the definition of intercultural business communication open to further interpretation and explanation. Um, any, could anybody add to that if they wish? Thanks, Mabel. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think we'll, we'll add to that as we go through, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, also, I realised that what I should have said to anybody watching is, if you've got any questions anytime, just pop them in the chat and we'll answer them as they come up or we can answer them at the end. And also, if you're watching this after we've done the live event, if you've got any questions, just email them to me. Um, so I'd like to move on to the second question now, which is, what kinds of things do you study on intercultural business communication? And if I could ask Jane to start on, 
start off with this one. Sure. Thanks, Nick. And um, thanks, um, Mabel, for um, giving us some really sort of interesting insights into the complexity, I think, of what intercultural business communication is. Um, and it's very difficult to kind of summarize that in, in, in a few minutes, but I think you've given us some really, some really interesting thoughts there. And what I'll try and do then is kind of also summarize um, the types of things that you might study if you're studying this kind of really rich and fascinating topic. So I want to talk both um, kind of generally about the subject area, intercultural business communication, the kinds of topics and issues and things that it involves, while also mentioning kind of some of the specific modules that you might have the opportunity to study if you were to come to Edinburgh Napier, um, either on one of our um, exciting new undergraduate programs. So we have two um, new joint honours undergraduate programmes, one in intercultural business communication and marketing management, and one in intercultural business communication and tourism management, which are going to be available from um, September 2024. So our first intake um, will be in September 2024. Uh, and we also have a, an, a successful um, postgraduate master's program in intercultural business communication and you'll be hearing um, from a couple of the, the graduates from that program uh, later today. So talking about intercultural business communication perhaps just more generally, um, what I would say I think is that it's a really interdisciplinary area of study. So it's an area of study which draws on a wide range of different disciplines, different academic subjects. And this is one of the things which makes it, you know, so interesting and exciting to study, I think. So when we study intercultural business communication, we are drawing on the arts and humanities, so cultural studies, languages, history, media studies, even philosophy, also from social sciences, including sociology, anthropology, geography, politics, um, and then, of course, business studies as well, business management, human resources management, business communications, marketing, um, tourism and hospitality. So all of these different disciplines and others come into play when you are studying intercultural business communication. And that's um, also reflected um, in our courses and in the range of modules that are on offer in our courses. So I want to kind of, I suppose, take it almost sort of topic by topic and then give you some examples um, of, of the types of modules that you might study in each area, although it's very difficult kind of to separate things out, but I'm going to kind of try, try and do that to make a bit of sense of it. So if you're studying intercultural business communication, one of the key things that, that you need to do is to gain a deep understanding of culture. So of culture as a concept and also culture as a lived phenomenon. And um, Mabel has already talked to, to, to us, to you, sorry, and to us, um, kind of about her approach, which I think reflects kind of all of our approach to culture um, as complex, as varied. The way that we understand and teach culture is um, that we think about the fact that people are not just defined by their national culture, um, but they belong to many different cultures simultaneously. So when we talk about our cultural identity, that is shaped by our national identity, but it's also shaped perhaps by the region or locality that we that we come from or other places that we've spent time in, by our experiences um, of, of migration. It's shaped by gender, it's shaped by age and generation, by religion, by vocation or profession, by educational background, by all of these different things. And so right from the beginning of your studies, whether at postgraduate or undergraduate level, we explore this idea of culture kind of in um, all of it, all of its kind of uh, complexity. So that's one of the things that you would do. And we have sort of introductory modules at undergraduate level, um, including introduction to intercultural business communication or exploring culture, where these kinds of things um, are explored in detail. Um, in these and other modules, you would also study a range of theories of intercultural communication and related concepts such as intercultural competence, intercultural sensitivity, intercultural adaptation. So all of these kind of different ideas that that, that are important within the field of intercultural communication. And we would trace sort of the evolution of these concepts and of the field of intercultural communication from an early focus on communication and interaction across national borders between different countries. So in the 
earlier days of intercultural communication, the focus very much was on international communication. Um, and more recent approaches focus much more on the sort of the cultural complexity, the intersectionality um, that we have that we have talked about. And the idea that actually, and Mabel's already addressed this, that actually intercultural communication is any kind of communication with another person or another group where people are in some way culturally different to us. And that can be actually another member of your own family who has a different life experience, who's perhaps a different age, um, who uh, has a different personality, who maybe speaks different languages to you. Um, but it can also be people that you interact with in a business context, in an educational context. So what this means really is that we have to consider culture, context and language in all of our interactions. And this is something that we look at, um, you know, across our modules and the different kinds of interactions and communicative sort of situations or scenarios um, that you might find yourself in are another focus of the intercultural business communication courses. So you would learn about different kinds, different forms of communication in workplace and other settings and consider how these might be considered intercultural and you'll think about how a knowledge and understanding of culture and intercultural communication can help you to engage in more effective and appropriate communications and interactions whether that be within an organization so if we think about workplace settings um, in team meetings in team projects where you're working with other people or whether that be then with external partners and clients so in a business negotiation in developing a marketing campaign for different cultural contexts welcoming tourists and visitors in a tourism or hospitality context welcoming people um, from other parts of the world or even just other parts of the the country or other organizations so we think about all of these different when we think about communication we're thinking you know not just about spoken or written communication but all of these different kinds of interactions and we look at lots and lots of different examples of those um, across our modules um, specifically uh, at undergraduate level, you might look at these kind of things in our first year module, Introduction to Intercultural Business Communication um, and Intercultural Communication for the Global Workplace. Um, and we also have a final year module which looks specifically at communication and international management. And in our postgraduate modules, we have modules such as developing intercultural competence um, in the workplace, which even includes kind of design and delivery of, of intercultural training. So thinking about specific kind of intercultural communication scenarios um, or advertising as intercultural discourse and looking at advertising as a form of intercultural communication as well. So you can see that when we talk about communication, we're talking very broadly there about all kinds of different interactions. Um, and I should perhaps uh, also mention that when we're thinking about intercultural communication, Mabel's touched on this again already, you can't really think about intercultural communication and study intercultural communication without understanding also the role that language plays in all of these interactions. So intercultural communication is also communication across language borders, but not just between different languages. So between a, a Japanese speaker and an English speaker, for example, but also between different registers, between different discourses. So thinking about things like how do you communicate, you know, complex public health information during a global pandemic, for example, how do you adapt all that information about, you know, COVID-19 to reach um, medical professionals, but also to reach, you know, parents and children and lots of people who, who need to understand what's going on, but might not understand all of the complex scientific language. So that's a form of intercultural communication as well that takes language into account. Um, so many workplaces, another thing that you would think about here is the use of English um, as a lingua franca. So many workplaces and educational contexts are multilingual, but use English as a lingua franca. So this is one of the things that you would also learn about and analyze in different ways um, across a number of modules. And, and specifically at postgraduate level, um, we have the module Understanding Language in a Global Workplace, which looks at this. So I want to just mention a couple more things before handing um, on to my other colleagues. So alongside thinking about um, culture and intercultural communication and sort of some of the theories and issues, you'll also gain insights into different cultural and intercultural contexts around the world. So it's important not to, it's important to understand culture and interculturality not just in kind of conceptual and theoretical terms but also actually to gain insights into different cultural contexts different ways of living and thinking and seeing the world so this helps you to 
appreciate the ways in which sort of historical and socio-political and economic issues shape people's worldviews, shape their ways of doing things, and therefore in influence intercultural um, relations, intercultural interactions in different parts of the world. So these kinds of insights, these histories, these stories, I would say feature across the curriculum, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level, but we have some specific modules at undergraduate level, such as a module in world histories and another module um, understanding European history and politics um, for the 21st century, where the focus very much is on looking at different parts of the world and understanding different parts of the world there. And within these and other modules, you also consider a range of intercultural issues, including things such as um, migration and mobility, um, globalization, colonialism and post-colonialism, you know, nation building, uh, border construction, all of these different kinds of things which sort of in, in influence intercultural communication. Um, and the last thing I think that I would just like to mention, because I'm aware I've been talking for a while, is that um, is sort of how you study all of these things. So um, the way it will usually work is there'll be a number, you, you'll kind of gain insight into the, the content, into the theory through interactive lectures, but there's lots and lots of sort of group work within tutorials and seminars where you really have an opportunity to discuss ideas, to apply them to case studies, including kind of, you know, written um business case studies, intercultural scenarios, films, adver advertisements, you know, from the real world, marketing campaigns from the real world. We might look at films or even extracts from literature and different things to really kind of understand how to apply these ideas to sort of real scenarios. And what's really lovely as well is the fact that we have um, students from all around the world. So there's with lots of different life experiences, um, lots of different backgrounds. And so you're able to kind of reflect on these things in relation to your own life experiences and talk about those things as well and there's lots of opportunity to do that um, and finally uh, in the undergraduate programs as well another opportunity to sort of apply that learning is in the third year where in the second semester of your third year so you'll have been with us already for two and a half years by this point you have the opportunity to kind of go off campus away from us and out into the world either to um, spend a term studying abroad at one of our partner universities or to take up a work placement, um, probably in the tourism or marketing sector, depending on the, the programme that you're studying, um, where you have the chance to kind of really develop and enhance your intercultural skills um, out in the real world. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight in, into what we do and to what you could study if you were studying um, with us here. That's great. Thanks, Jane. I'm just um, thinking about what you said and what Mabel have said, and I'm just thinking cultures are ab absolutely everything. And I'm thinking even, even this, this the live stream and the, the technical stuff, for me, it's a new cultural thing. And I'm co constantly encountering new cultural things. Um, and that's, well, if you stop, you, you've got to keep learning new stuff. And I suppose, I don't know if I was adding anything at the, at the postgraduate level, it's to study exactly the same things of the language and the context and the theories but in this kind of greater depth as well. Um, if I'd like, I could move on to the to the next question now with, with Vivian to start this one off. And it's, what is it that makes studying intercultural business communication unique? Thank you, Nick. Um, I have to get, admit, I get a bit distracted by the comments from, from some of the audience who mentioned, well, so I've got students who have taken our modules before and giving some nice feedback here. Right, right. so for those of you who did my classes before, you will, you might remember that I might struggle to answer this question within just a couple of minutes. What makes studying the subject unique? But I try my best. In my understanding, it's about what makes studying intercultural business communication different from what people might think by common sense. So I would say it's not really about what people think about studying a bit of international differences, studying a bit of business, and studying a bit of communication strategies and then simply adding these up like mathematics. Because we know well by experience that in real life situations, we often face problems where we cannot simply and easily separate communication from culture or separate cultural matters from business concerns we quite often come across problems and tasks we have to complete. 
And we have to work together with people to complete them, with people who think very differently from us. So it's not simply about thinking and talking about cultural diversity, which you can do forever. We have to get things done. So studying intercultural business communication is more about approaching these complex matters overall as a complex whole. We for sure will look into cultural concerns, business concerns, and communication skills. But we do more than that. We go further to integrate these insights into a system of wisdom that will help us understand things better, but also to become more pragmatic and also creative when we are confronted by concrete situations. So I would say it's certainly about, but much more than becoming a specialist or expert in particular and separate disciplines. It is essentially about engaging in a mind-changing process. Okay. Thanks very much, Vivian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I agree. Um, and then I'm just sort of, um, yeah, moving on. To, see, I th for me, one of the things that makes it unique is this real emphasis on this continual learning. And that, that, that's something that I'm doing all, all, all the time as I'm sort of studying and, and encountering new things and trying to understand what's going on. And there's things that I don't understand that frustrate me. And then when I think about them differently, then I can understand a bit more. Um, so just moving on to the next question, which is which is me to lead off on, it's what can you do career-wise with intercultural business communication? And if, if I'm thinking about this, I'm kind of thinking back to oh, over the, you know, 10, 11 years, I've been sort of program leading the masters of what students have gone on to do with what I, what I know that of some of them that I've gone on to do. Um, one of them a number of years ago who, with I should say that with the masters in intercultural business communication, there's kind of two or three routes that, that people sort of go down. They could kind of go down a, one where they choose an option module related to tourism or they go down a route where they choose options related to marketing or related to HR, human resource management. Um, and I'm just thinking of one person who chose with, with the, the marketing route. Um, this person ended up getting a job with a company that made artificial limbs um, that was based in another, another town in Scotland called Livingston. It might be a city, actually. I'm not sure. And she was working for this company because because she was a German speaker and it was based in the USA, the UK and Germany. And what I found interesting from what she said was that the biggest cultural differences were between the UK and the USA, not between the UK and Germany and not between the USA and Germany. Um, so even there, I, I wondered whether there was some kind of false understanding that just because the language looked on the surface to be the same, then there would be sort of cultural, there would be an expectation that there would be no cultural differences. Um, I can think of other people who've been working in HR who did the masters while they were still working. Um, I can think of someone at the moment who's working for the UN in Africa. I can think of someone who's working at the EU parliament. I can think of others that have sort of gone into teaching and I can think of others that have gone into academia and I can think of others that are, have already been working and that are working in kind of HR related departments. And I'll ask Irene to say a little bit more about that later. Um, so I think the thing I would maybe emphasize with it is, is it's, it's one of those intercultural business communication and a knowledge of it is something that gives you a kind of a unique quality, but it's one that needs to sort of be emphasized and might not be kind of fully appreciated by others. Because it takes all these different disciplines and because it gives you this unique quality, it gives you more of an in-depth understanding of culture that someone might benefit from having if they've just studied culture from a marketing perspective or just studied culture from a HR perspective. They might look at it in terms of national dimensional models, whereas if you've studied intercultural business communication with all its emphasis on cultural complexity, it gives you more of an in-depth understanding of that there being a lot more to it than that and you can then take that to a career that you go into and um what i've been thinking about working on recently and i am kind of emphasizing more is to get everybody that studies it to really build that into the cv 
as much as they can when they do that. And we do have people here, very, 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 very helpful people in the careers department that will come and talk to the students so that you can go and speak to as well about that. Um, I think that's all I would say on that. Um, I can see that there's a question come in from Lou, which is how do these intercultural comms modules connect with justice, equity, diversion, diversity, inclusion, business practices? Um, and I think I'll hand that one over to Irene a little bit later on, actually. But I would say just now that they do connect very much with it, you know, an understanding of diversity and inclusion has very much to do with um, understandings of different cultures and how you're interacting with people interculturally. Um, I think it's very complex in that there are broader, larger kind of political and social uh, things which are going on with that. But um, yeah, I think it's very closely connected to that. Yeah, I do. Um, and as I say, I'll ask, I imagine Irene would say something about that later. Um, um, and then if I move on to the next question, which is why study at Edinburgh Napier? And if I ask Sibylla to start us up on that one. Okay, I'll have a go at um, answering that question. So I'll say a few words about the university itself and then a few words about um, Edinburgh. So if you um, decide to study with us, which we sincerely hope that you do, um, you will be taught by us, basically. Um, we are a very small, but um, very friendly and approachable team. We know each other very well. We work together very well. And um, we also try and um, get to know the students well. Um, we are all research active and um, we carry out various projects, for instance, in the area of migration, refugees and, and other areas. Um, but we're also um, really interested in teaching itself. We have lots of teaching experience and, and we are also um, interested in pedagogical research. So um, we try to use innovative and creative methods when we teach. Um, Edinburgh Napier itself, as a university is is actually very well regarded for um, the diversity of its students and and for offering a very um, supportive and inclusive environment, apart from also the academic expertise, of course. Um, so when you study with us, you'll be assigned a personal development tutor. And um, if you have any questions or issues, then that will be your first point of contact. And, and we can signpost you to lots of different areas of um, support which the university offers, uh, whether it's um, academic support, language support, um, financial advice, or in the area of well-being. There, there are lots of dedicated teams here. Um, you will be studying at the business school, which is um, a beautiful building and um, it's being in a business school, it offers lots of opportunities as well in the areas of career development, for instance, but also um, fostering connections with industry and um, opportunities for placements. So you'll be able to join uh, different networks and not least after your graduation, um, you can join the alumni network, which also um, gives you access to, um, to career opportunities. And um, the career development advice is actually available to you, not just as a student, but also as an alumni for the whole of the rest of your career. So you'll be able to, to gain support here, whether it's um, writing CVs or um, cover letters and things like that. Um, so lots of reasons to study at Edinburgh Napier, but um, you'll also be studying in a beautiful city. So Edinburgh, if you've never been here, then you should look it up on the internet. It's a, uh, um, it's a hugely international city, um, very diverse, but also known for being very friendly. Uh, the architecture and urban, urban planning are, are um, amazing as well. So there are two um, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the centre of the city. Um, also, the Scottish Parliament is located here, so it's the capital of Scotland, and there are um, very many festivals which are carried out here every year. So um, whether it's in the area of music, theater, film, science, there's lots and lots of opportunities to visit um, these festivals, but also to work part-time. So um, if you're interested in um, in working alongside your, your studies, then um, there are many opportunities to find part-time work. 
And not just the city is amazing, but also the landscape surrounding Edinburgh. So um, very many students come to Scotland um, for the nature, for the mountains, for the highlands. And if you're interested in walking, hiking, swimming, and the beaches are also um, really beautiful, then um, Edinburgh is the place to come to. And I think um, all students who, who come here are absolutely um, amazed with the surroundings and nobody ever regrets studying in Edinburgh. Yeah, that's my little pitch. <laughs> in case anybody wants to add anything, please do. Thanks very much, Sibylla. So, uh, all I would say is it's interesting you saying that because just last Friday, I was in a sort of a feedback meeting for the previous year of the MSc Intercultural Business Communications. And when one of the students was asked, you know, where did they want to go on and be in the future? They said, Scotland. I love Scotland. I love Edinburgh. They'd, they'd had a great time here. Yeah. Um, if I move on to the, to, the, to the last question, which we've got, which is, how has studying the Intercultural Business Masters helped you? Um, and if I ask Frank first, and then after that, I would ask Irene just to say a little bit about that. Okay, thank you very much, Nick. And yeah, uh, wow, when I listen to all the lectures, it yes. sounds like I yes. was back to my IBC MSc program ages ago. I had the wonderful lecture now. <laughs> I have. It reminds me about the in induction week I had like um, more than ten years ago. And um, anyway, um, to me, I think. Um, Listen the, to all the kind of summaries you have just uh, introduced to the audience. I would like to say I know the modules under the IBC MSc program are always well developed. But now when I heard this summary compared to what I had between 2011 to 2012, I think it's Modules, modules now are far more interesting and they are very, very fascinating. And I wish I could go back and do the MSc program again if it's free, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. So um, now uh, let's uh, come back to Nick's questions. Thinking of the benefit after doing the MSc program at Napier, and to me, based on my experience, I think three key words may occur to my mind. I will go through them one by one. The first keyword to me is about independent learning or to be a qualified independent learner. I think the whole year MSc program did provide me with so many opportunities, so many chances to practice myself, how to be independent learning knowledge, how to handle things, cope with difficulties, cope with challenges, in an independent way. What, when i talking about being an independent learner, I'm not simply mentioning about finishing the coursework on time, submit them into the school office on time, or finish the given task after the class. I'm more trying to emphasize on how we try to learn and develop our critical thinking, our um, Sounds like, you know, also the uh, reflections on those kind of uh, topics and also how we are able to draw on the, all the resources available. In the meantime, try to make a smart decision that suits into the context, that suits into your current kind of situation. Uh, personally, I believe this independent learning skills is transferable from the course study time to your future career kind of workplace because sooner or later we all are going to find a job and become an employee then i think more often than not we probably will be overwhelmed by those information by the opinions given by surrounding peoples maybe our bosses would give us a contradictory kind of directions then how do we be independent? How are we able to make a good judgment based on those knowledge? I think this kind of skill can be practiced. And I have been like learning a lot through my study at the MSc program. So this is the first keyword I would like to say. Secondly, I think the keyword I would like to emphasize here is about reflection. Compared to other MSc programs at Napier or even at other universities, 
I believe reflection or self-reflection or reflexivity, a more academical term, would be some unique features of this IBC program. In the very beginning, Mabel mentioned about uh, how do we live out of our comfort zone. In the middle part, I think Jane also mentioned about uh, develop our uh, intercultural competence, our intercultural sensitivity, our adaptability, and also Vivian mentioned about uh, the mind changing process. To be honest, based on my experience of the learning at Napier, the, those things could not happen if we do not know how to reflect on ourselves. We all try to solve the problems in the future, especially in the workplace. So to me, to solve problems, to find a solution, sometimes not focus on how to explore others, but focus on how to question ourselves. What we need to question, how to question our own beliefs, how to question our own behaviors. We may start to consider, please do not take everything for granted. We may start to open our mind much wider and start to consider, to question about the binary views. Sometimes there might not be always yes or no. There might not always be black and white. I think those kind of things will be well discussed academically, theoretically, and also practically in most of the model, modules under this MSc program. I think I really appreciate that when I did the master's degree at Napier. I think the last point I would like to uh, emphasize, or the last keyword is about uh, understand ourselves much better, or uh, in other way, we could clean up our mind a little bit. I remember in the middle, Nick says about what would be the career in the future when you finish your MSc program. And he mentioned about a lot of kind of jobs people are doing. But I also now offer you another pathway is become a researcher in IC, okay, a researcher in intercultural communication. This is what I am doing now. Actually, I had no idea about uh, who I would be, what I would like to do when I started the MSc at Napier. I was purely, I would say, an innocent student. I just finished my undergraduate. I just would like to get a degree. But after like a half year of studying, after a lot of engagement with the lectures, most of them have taught me those modules. And then after doing the master's dissertation, gradually, step by step, I realized that, oh, I have a passion about uh, doing research in I intercultural communication in IC. I would like to be a person like what my supervisors is doing at that moment or is also doing now. So that's why I furthered my study at Napier again after the MSc and doing a PhD in intercultural communication. And then now I'm a researcher in intercultural communication as well in this field. And as Jane mentioned earlier, intercultural communication is an interdisciplinary field. You have so many opportunities to learn different knowledges and theories from all those traditional kind of disciplines like sociology, uh, psychology, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not going to repeat that. So I think this is another pathway that you could consider. I'm not saying you must go that like what I'm doing, but I do appreciate because of the MSc program, it made me able to become who I am at the moment. Okay, in particular, help me to explore myself and explore uh, what I really be passionate about, probably for the rest of my life. I'm not sure yet, but at the moment, I'm very pleased about what I'm doing. Okay, so I think this is what I'm going to share with you as alumni, one of the alumni who had done the MSc program at Napier. So um, I think uh, uh, another one, another lady will give you something else, okay? Thanks, thank you. Irene? I'm trying to un yeah, yeah. I think um, pretty much um, a lot of it has been said. But I found really studying intercultural business from a place of personal inquiry, and um, rather than sort of, you come in with your own sort of 
ideas that you know what you would get away from it but i think even the experience of actually working um alongside um different students from different generations different backgrounds that also forms that part of that sort of experiential learning um in a way but i also found it really interesting um in terms of culture um which um you know i was taught by vivian and it was interesting it was more about really understanding your own culture because we tend to think about understanding other cultures but a good starting point is always um understanding sort of your own culture and how you relate to, um, with other people but more interestingly i found it that about culture this you know um understanding issues of imposition and how sometimes we may tend to push our own culture as being the one because we we think that that that's sort of the culture that everybody else might subscribe to but it's also about um creating a third space particularly if you you know for people working um in a multicultural team so because everyone comes in with their own understanding of what they see as culture and that can create a tension um particularly in organizations so it's always about negotiating spaces um particularly and also finding new ways to to sort of get stuff done <laughs> because we, we we do need to get work done um i found the sort of language to be really interesting um a part of the the course because um there's a lot of repository um in language in itself how it's used and how it can influence um our thinking or even perhaps even political discourse so i found that really interesting and how different industries um use the different genres of of language and how they communicate and who they are communicating with so i found that really interesting um to learn and uh, what that sort of has done for me is to continue to remain curious um not just about myself but also about other people and how other people interact with other people and how they interact with the world around them and you know negotiating uh, new spaces but i think it's also about uh, being critical um about how we look at things how we see things i found that doing the msc allows you that time of reflection and using different approaches to learning um which in itself is inclusive because you know you have a whole um list of um literature to look at but what i also find interesting is real examples of people um in different geographies working together so that was really quite sort of experiential and interesting to make analysis from that and i also did enjoy actually <laughs> sort of watching a film together and how you bring those sort of um thoughts and how people can see the same thing but come up with a sort of different um perspectives in terms of what they understand from the film so i think that sort of inter interconnected ways of learning together um is really quite interesting um and <laughs> what i found interesting also was the issue around uh working together and attitudes towards uh, work and how we look at work and this is more really interesting for in in the workplace to understand people's attitudes and ethics around work so i found that aspect uh, really interesting and you know understanding it from a a cultural um point of view um I'm, i'm sort of wondering if there's anything else uh, anik you mentioned that there was a question around diversity and inclusion that you wanted me to speak to yeah that was just um the, the question that came up is how 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 do we think it sort of the the cultural the intercultural business communication how does that interact with or align with or operate with you know themes of justice equality diversity and inclusion there yeah is. i think yeah i think it's also um intercultural communication in how it can help business practice because managers now who have multicultural workforces um themselves need to have that cultural intelligence in terms of how they convene and motivate people from different um cultures so that in itself becomes sort of a, a complexity uh, or a complex space for 
uh, people in the business space to understand how they, they do that. And it also becomes something um, in terms of learning and development for organizations also to explore ways in which that they can create spaces for curiosity, understanding of difference and how they manage and leverage on that difference. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an evolving <laughs> issue in the workplace, but also it's also about um, how, it, because with that also creates tension and with that tension um, arises conflict. It's how um, you know managers um, in business spaces are well equipped to deal and understand uh, with the complexity of different cultures in the workplace. And I think that's it. That's it for me. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so I ju I just like to say thanks to everybody here, to Frank, to Sibylla, Mabel. Irene, Vivian, and Jane for for, for being here and, and doing this. Um, and, and also I'd like to say thanks to Elena, to Nicole, to Zoe, to Ron, and also to Di Xiao for sort of being there as well and helping us organize it. And this has been a new cultural experience for me uh, personally to do this. And it's been one that I've actually, I have very much enjoyed. So, and it's been great as well to do, because I hope that it's allowed us to sort of you know get across how enthusiastic we are about this this area of intercultural business communication and about studying it and if you've got any questions do please email me at the email address that's just coming across there down at the bottom and that's, those are questions if you were sort of watching it just now or if you're watching it at some later date and thank you very much and keep learning and keep studying <laughs>